Hello, this is the audio version of Park Run Magazine. Thanks so much for listening. Each episode of the audio magazine will share hints and tips about getting started on a more active lifestyle, as well as stories about the people and communities around Park Run events. Hello, you're listening to episode 5 of the second series of Park Run Magazine in audio form. Each episode features a selection of the stories from the second printed issue of the magazine. In this episode, we find out more about stretching. Whether you're just beginning to get active or you have been coming to Park Run for years, you're still working your muscles and it's important that you look after them. Plus, did you know that the ordinary carrot is something of a superhero in the vegetable world. We'll discover more about the humble carrot and share some recipes created by our friends at the co-op. And of course, we'll feature a couple more stories from park runners around the United Kingdom. Whether you spend most of your time sitting down or are always on the go, you're still working your muscles. Stretching is one way we can look after them. We spoke to a personal trainer, a coach and an international athlete to find out more. All are voiced by actors. Stretching helps us to improve posture and lengthen muscles. Think of a muscle like an elastic band, explains personal trainer and yoga teacher Erin Barber. You want it to be stretchy but still be strong. If you put an elastic band in the freezer, when you took it out, it would snap because it's too tight and brittle. We use our muscles all the time, even sitting at a desk all day, which can lead to tightness in the hips. Stretching can help to improve flexibility. General flexibility is good for overall muscle health, says coach Adam Clark of Purdue Performance. If your back and shoulders are tight, he adds, something as simple as looking at your phone or picking up your coffee is going to make you sore. Stretching can go some way to eliminating this. It's a win-win for everyday life, adds Adam. Of course, stretching is also important if you have a fitness routine or are taking your first steps into physical activity. There are two main kinds of stretches to consider, dynamic and static. Dynamic stretching is about mimicking the movements you're about to do. British long-distance runner Charlotte Perdue uses dynamic stretching after her warm-up before she runs. It's about moving through the stretch and increasing blood flow to certain muscles, she says. People tend to do the dynamic stretching before they exercise and the static stretches afterwards, says Erin. So, if you're going for a brisk walk, start with a gentle walk. If you're planning to jog, start with a five-minute walk or begin with a jog and then go into your run. If you were going to do a squat with a weight, the best dynamic stretch would be to do a squat without a weight, says Erin. Static stretching is about holding a stretch for a certain amount of time, using controlled movements, rather than forcing yourself into a certain position. Go as far as you can till you're feeling the stretch and you can hold it for 10 to 15 seconds. Then release, says Adam. After five seconds, repeat the stretch and you'll find that your muscles have already lengthened so your range of movement is greater. You should feel a stretch, but you shouldn't feel any pain. If you feel a little discomfort, that's okay, Erin advises. But if it's painful, then that's not okay. You can find a stretching routine to suit you on audio apps such as With You or online. And there are plenty of stretching routines online. I like YouTube, says Charlotte. If I put YouTube on the TV, she laughs. It makes me do it for 10 minutes. I tell clients the best time to stretch is in the morning, explains Erin. Because you've been lying in bed all night, especially if you're going into an intense day, If you can stretch several parts of your body, all the better. Try to think about stretching around your neck, shoulders, hips, knees and ankles, says Erin. If you're sitting down all day, she also recommends trying to stretch at regular intervals. Just get your arms up in the air, she adds. It doesn't even have to be a specific stretch with a name. Just moving your joints is giving your body a bit of a wake-up call. Fitting 10-minute stretching into your everyday life creates space for you. We're hunched over phones and laptops all the time and we can't help it because that's just life, says Adam. But stretching can be a bit of me time. Have a stretch, then lie there for five minutes if you want to shut your eyes. You may want to stretch outdoors. 
Nature is a healer, says Erin. Take a moment, pause and breathe. Stretching is a form of self-care. She adds, if you can find a quiet spot where you can just breathe, have no distractions around you and really focus on what you're doing, you may be able to stretch a bit further. People often wonder whether they need to warm up and cool down before and after parkrun. While there's no need to warm up before you walk, jog, run or volunteer, there are some proven benefits to getting the body moving using stretching and gentle movements. This can also help you to look after your body after your parkrun. In addition, stretching and movement are great if you're trying something new or challenging yourself to push a little further. Personal trainer L. Linton has created a series of stretching routines that can work for you whether you're an experienced park runner or just beginning your journey. Remember, these stretching routines are a guide. Do what feels comfortable for you. Let's begin with some YTW pulses, named after those three alphabet letters. Lifting your arms above your head, open them into a Y shape so your hands are slightly wider apart than your shoulders. Imagine you've got a £5 note between your shoulder blades. Squeeze them together to hold the note while opening your chest. Squeeze and release for 5 to 10 repetitions. Do the same again with arms in a T position, so arms are in line with your shoulders. Then W with elbows bent. These movements are great to warm up the upper back, chest and shoulders. Now, how about some squats? Squats are a great way to mobilise a few different joints in one movement, your hips, knees and ankles, while warming up some of the main muscles you'll be using in your park run. Stand with your feet comfortably apart. Hip width is usually a good place to start. Then imagine you're about to sit on a chair by pushing your hips back and down. Try to keep your chest lifted by looking ahead. And once your thighs have reached about parallel to the ground, Press down through your heels and drive back up to standing. Try 5 to 10 repetitions. Let's come on to joint circles. You can use these for shoulders, hips, knees and ankles, even wrists if they feel tight. Simply perform some circles, forwards and backwards for shoulders, anti-clockwise and clockwise for hips, knees and ankles. Do 5 to 10 circles in each direction for each area. A fun variation to try is drawing the alphabet with your toes to mobilise your ankles. The next stretch is called opening and closing the gate. It's another great movement for the hips. To open the gate, lift up the knee of one leg towards the centre of your body, then open it out towards the side before bringing it back down again. To close the gate, you lift up the knee to the side of the body and then move it across the body towards your centre line an imaginary line down the middle of your body and place it back down. Perform 5 to 10 of each on each leg. Calf raises are great for the lower legs. The exercise stretches your calf muscles and mobilises your ankles. From standing, push through the balls of your feet while raising your heels until you are standing on your toes. Then lower slowly back to the start. You might want to hold on to a friend or a static object to help with balance. Try 5 to 10 of these. Let's finish off with some leg swings, just to make sure the legs are fully woken up. First, forward and back. Keeping your body and leg relaxed, gently swing your leg behind and then in front of your body. Perform 5 to 10 on each leg and hold on to something or someone if you need to. Now side to side. Keeping your body and leg relaxed, gently swing your leg across your body to the left, then to the right. Perform 5 to 10 on each leg. Eat this, don't eat that. It can sometimes feel as if every piece of nutrition advice you see contradicts the last. Must-eat ingredients seem to change week on week. But while different superfoods come and go, there are some staples that deliver plenty of benefits without all the hype. One humble vegetable that packs a punch when it comes to taste, health benefits and versatility is the carrot. Here we look at some of the reasons eating carrots can be good for you, as well as a few delicious carrot recipes. Carrots are part of the Epiaceae, or umbellifier family of plants, 
which includes parsnips, parsley, coriander, dill, fennel and caraway. There are a few members of the same plant family as the carrot that are poisonous. But what you'll find at your local supermarket, green grocer or farmer's market won't do you any harm. On the contrary, carrots are packed with benefits. The reason carrots are the color they are, which is not always orange by the way, carrots come in hues from almost white to dark purple, is because of a chemical called beta-carotene. It is found in many fruits and vegetables. But the chemical is so closely associated with carrots that it is named after them. Eva McKernan, nutrition manager at Co-op, says carrots contain beta-carotene, which turns into vitamin A in the body. Vitamin A has number of important health benefits. It contributes to the maintenance of normal vision and to the maintenance of normal skin. It also contributes to the normal function of the immune system. Carrots pack a pretty significant nutritional punch whether we eat them fresh, frozen or canned. Aoife also points out that carrots are very versatile in terms of how they can be prepared. As we'll see in the recipes, they can be boiled, steamed, roasted or even just nagged on as carrot sticks, she says. Co-op works with a single supplier for all the whole carrots you see on their shelves. Stuart Lee is the senior national account manager for that company, Hunter Pack. Stuart explains that carrots are grown in the UK all year round, meaning there are fresh carrots which have not been imported, available 52 weeks per year. We champion British produce, explains Stuart, which is something that was very important for co-op. The Hunter Pack team grows carrots in different parts of the UK, from Norfolk to Scotland, to ensure that they can supply the vegetable whatever the weather. And the company is constantly searching for ways to improve the product. Looking at new varieties, most carrots we see in shops are a variety called Nairobi and ways to reduce the use of pesticides. Availability of carrots year-round hints at the fact that the vegetable can be consumed in a number of ways. But as Stuart says, carrots tend to come into their own over winter. We perhaps think that raw vegetables are somehow healthier. But cooked carrots have even more benefits. Cooking releases hidden pockets of beta-carotene. Eating carrots raw is great, but that only gives you 3% of the chemical in the carrots. When you cook carrots, they release closer to 40%. Aoife says that eating carrots is a small, straightforward way people can make a healthier food choice. Even better, you don't need to make a lot of effort. In the UK, we are not consuming enough fiber in our diets, she explains. Leaving the skin on wedge is an easy way to increase fiber in your diet. You can just give carrots a good wash instead of peeling them. Let's dig up a few facts about carrots. Carrots start growing in June and can be harvested all year around. Carrots take approximately 145 days to reach full size. They remain in the soil during this period. The ground is used as natural storage until they are ready to be harvested. Crops are harvested in early hours of the morning when temperature are cooler to preserve product quality and to keep them fresher for longer. Carrots are a biannual crop and part of the umbellifier or apiaceae crop family related to parsnips, celery and parsley. So now let's see what we can do with carrots. We have picked out three co-ops recipes which we'll describe here. Don't forget, you can always pause or rewind this audio by a few seconds to make sure you hear all the details. Alternatively, they appear on the co-op website. We also asked leading sports nutritionist Renee McGregor to take a look at each recipe to explain why she thinks they can be included in what we eat every day. Renee is an expert in optimizing what people, including elite athletes, eat. And she also specializes in treating eating disorders and female athletes' requirements. Renee has distilled her knowledge into several books, including More Fuel You, Understanding Your Body and How to Fuel Your Adventures. Let's begin with Beetroot Falafel Pita with Carrot Pickle. Renee says, these are a great plant-based snack after you have been particularly active. They are also a good lunch option on the day before you plan a physical activity. Packed full of complex carbs, as well as soluble and insoluble fiber, they are a fab choice to support gut health too. Here's what you need. 
125 grams of cooked beetroot, roughly chopped. One 400 gram can of chickpeas, drained and rinsed. A quarter of a 25 gram pack of coriander, chopped. Half a tablespoon of ground cumin. 60 grams of plain flour. Four wholemeal pitters sliced open lengthways. 150 grams of carrots, coarsely grated. Two tablespoons of cider vinegar. One teaspoon of caster sugar. A handful of baby spinach. Half a cucumber, diced. Half a tablespoon of olive oil. Half a teaspoon of hot sauce. For example, sriracha. Here's what you do. First, preheat the oven to 200 degrees centigrade or fan 180 degrees centigrade or gas 6. Whiz the beetroot, chickpeas, coriander, cumin, flour and seasoning in a food processor until smooth. Using slightly wet hands, shape into 12 balls and place on a lined baking tray. Bake for 25 to 30 mins until firm and crisp, turning halfway through. Put the pitters in the oven for the final 5 minutes to heat through. Meanwhile, pickle your grated carrot. Put it in a bowl and combine with the cider vinegar, sugar, 50 millilitres of water and seasoning. Set aside. Remove the falafel and pitta from the oven and drain the carrot, reserving the liquid. Divide the pickled carrot between the four pitters, along with the spinach and diced cucumber. Stuff each pitta with three falafels. Combine one tablespoon of the pickling liquid with the oil and hot sauce, along with a little seasoning. Drizzle over each pitta before serving. Next up, carrot cake porridge. Renny says, this is an ideal choice for breakfast on these cooler mornings. It's packed full of complex carbs, which release slowly to provide you with energy throughout the morning. Here's what you need. 150 grams of porridge oats. 1 litre of unsweetened almond drink. 1 carrot, finely grated. 1 apple, grated. 2 teaspoons of ground cinnamon. 50 grams of sultanas. Half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Serve with 1 thinly sliced apple, 2 tablespoons of seed mix and a tablespoon of sultanas. Here's what to do. Put all the ingredients for the porridge into a slow cooker. Stir well to combine, then cook on low for 8 hours. In the morning, if a skin has formed, simply stir it through the porridge. Serve in bowls, sprinkled with the toppings. Finally, here's a vegan recipe for a one-pot pasta dish. Rene says, pasta is a popular family favourite and this recipe is also vegan. This is what you need. One aubergine, one carrot, two red peppers, one red onion, two garlic cloves, six peppercorns, a dried bay leaf, 3 tablespoons of olive oil, 250 grams of penne pasta, 1 400 gram can of chopped tomatoes, 50 grams of raisins, a tablespoon of drained jarred capers, chopped, some flat leaf parsley, chopped. And this is what to do. Cube the aubergine and carrot, slice the red peppers, finely chop the red onion and crush the garlic cloves. Keep the trimmings, outer leaves, stalks and seeds. Place the trimmings, seeds, outer leaves and stalks into a pan, along with one and a quarter litres of water, the peppercorns and the dried bay leaf. Bring to a simmer and cook for 35 mins, then strain and discard the trimmings. This is your stock. Heat one and a half tablespoons of olive oil in a large pan and cook the aubergine and pepper over a high heat for 5 to 10 mins until golden. Remove and set aside. Heat another 1.5 tablespoons of olive oil, then cook the carrot, onion and garlic for 5 mins over a low heat until softened. Add the penne pasta, the stock and chopped tomatoes, then bring to the boil. Reduce to a simmer. Add the aubergine, pepper, raisins and capers, then cook covered for 12 mins. Cook uncovered for 3 to 4 mins until the liquid is reduced and the pasta is al dente. This means cooked but slightly firm. Season, then serve garnished with parsley. Carrots are so versatile. What a brilliant variety of recipes. To round off this episode, let's hear one more story from a park runner. 
Charlie Cotton took part in his first ever 5K park run at Long Eaton in March 2016, and he says that was the day he fell in love with park run. He wrote to us in summer 2022 when he had almost completed another 200 park runs. He told us, I was also encouraged to take part in junior park run. I went the next week and my family marshaled. The event was great and I proceeded to go every Sunday until I was too old. Well, that's it for another episode. Who knew that the ordinary carrot was so versatile? And those stretches sound really straightforward. It's definitely worth seeing if you can fit a few minutes of stretching into your day-to-day -day life. It doesn't have to be anything madly athletic, just a gentle stretch to wake up your muscles. Coming up in the sixth and final episode of this series, we talk about the ongoing impact of long COVID. And Joe Wicks talks about his Walk With Joe campaign, which benefited BBC Children in Need in 2022. Thank you for listening to Parkrun Magazine. We hope you like the features and enjoyed our simple ways to take steps towards a happier and healthier life. To find out more about your local Parkrun event or collect a free copy of the printed magazine, head over to magazine.parkrun.com. Parkrun Magazine is created by Parkrun with the audio version made possible through editing and audio adaptation by Imogen Lees and production by Light the Wind Media and Runcom. If you enjoyed listening, please remember to subscribe, leave a review or share it with others. That's all for this episode. We hope you enjoy the next one.